Howdy folks, Paula here. My video today, not making music, I'm going to talk. I've got a list of 20 things that new taxi members can do or consider or think about to optimize, to maximize, to get the most out of their taxi membership. So I was reading some things uh, earlier today and I started thinking about taxi members. I saw a post about some older composers getting into the TV sync music business for the first time. And they're expressing concerns about, you know, do I have time to make money and it's going to take, you know, me a lot of effort and blah, blah, blah. And, and I also noticed at the taxi rally back in November, there are a lot of attendees that were, you know, up in their years. I'm 56 and there are a lot of folks much older than me, a lot of gray hair, a lot of slow walkers. And that's fantastic. It, I think it's awesome. Music is a thing that people of all ages, ages can get into and enjoy and, and, and derive some pleasure and passion from. Um, but I had seen some comments recently about some older folks expressing concern. Geez, can I make money doing this? And how long is it going to take? Well, honestly, yes, it's going to take time. So I felt kind of compelled to get a message out there. I just let folks know, look, it does take time. You've got to prioritize, um, but it can be done. I didn't start this until I turned 50. And I'm making, you know, decent amount of money in the TV music sync business. I'm not living on it yet. I've still got, you know, computer, IT, cloud technology type stuff that I do. But my music income is is growing every quarter. Placements on a lot of TV shows, 50, 60 TV different series on 30 or 40 different networks in 30 or 40 different countries. So it's taken me five, six years to get there. But you can do it. And no matter what age you start at. But don't make the mistake of thinking this is a, oh, I can make quick money thing. Because that's not how... The music world works in general, and that's definitely not how TV sync music business works, and that's not what Taxi is for. Taxi is not a service where you are discovered as an artist, you're the next Justin Bieber, just find me and, and make me famous. That's not what they do. Taxi is a very specific thing. It provides music briefs to music libraries and music supervisors. It helps match composers with the people that need to place music in TV shows, movies, commercials, video games, etc. So you have to be willing to read the details of the briefs, crank out the music they need and the quality they need. You have to be patient. And eventually, if you want to make money at this, you need to be able to generate a decent quantity of work, not just quality. Um, so... There's a lot of things to consider. Uh, and so what I wanted to do, I joined Taxi in 2015. I was there for three years or so. And then I had met lots of people and made relationships with libraries, which is exactly what Taxi exists to do. And I felt that, geez, I could spend time and money sending submissions to Taxi or I could focus on my clients now. And so I decided Taxi served its purpose for me and I, I didn't renew and I focused on my libraries. And then last year, you know, a few years later, um, I felt the need to come back to Taxi. I wanted to find some new library relationships. I wanted to see my friends again, uh, get, interact with them again. Um, I went to the rally back in November after three years of a hiatus because of, you know, the pandemic, etc. And it was fantastic seeing my people, fellow composers, peers, friends, superior, uh, you know, uh, business people that are, are using my music, etc. Uh, it was awesome. So I came back to Taxi and to pay it forward. Because when I joined Taxi in 2015, despite having several decades of actual legitimate music experience as a performer with a music degree, etc., I didn't know a thing about how sync business, TV music, movie music worked. And so I had the musical skills, but I had zero knowledge of the business. And some very, very nice people, some mentors, you know, taxi members helped me go down the right path and, and learn from my mistakes, et cetera. And so one of the reasons I came back to taxi was to pay it forward and mentor like I was mentored. So um, after my first year at taxi, after my first rally at taxi, I wrote a letter to Michael Laskow, the CEO, a wonderful gentleman who basically invented this business and still deeply cares about taxi after doing it for 25 plus years. Um, and I said, hey, you know, I had a great time at the rally. It got a lot of energy. I'm pumped up. And I think lots of folks can learn from this. And, and here's a list of things I suggest they do. And I found that list. And I'm like, I, that's worthy of sharing. So here is Paul's top 20 things new tax members should do or understand to get the most out of their taxi membership. Number one, and these are in no particular order, 
Ask for help in the taxi forums. Forums, plural, dot taxi, dot com. Uh, it's free. You don't need to be a taxi member to participate in the forums. Uh, you can, it's free. You sign up, create an ID. That's how I did it in 2015. I, 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 I learned about taxi in Songwriter Magazine. There's a full page ad. Uh, and then I checked out the forums and saw these folks were very knowledgeable. They were very talented. And it was really cool, a neat community. And I decided to, to sign up. Um, so definitely visit the forums. And, and lurk and, and then sign up and, 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 and post questions and post your music, etc. But before you ask questions, be sure you read the FAQ documents and use the search tool because probably what you want to ask has already been asked and answered. Number two, be willing to accept constructive criticism and feedback. This is a must for anyone in a creative business, whether you're a musician, uh, whether you're a painter or a sculptor, it, you, you need to be able to accept constructive criticism to make your craft better. Now, as composers of TV and film music, we're not trying to create art. We are serving a client's needs. We are artisans, not artists. If you want to create art, that's fantastic. But know that that's a completely different mindset, different goals, different processes, etc. When you're signing up to say, yes, I want to write music for TV, You've got to follow the instructions of your clients. If you're a chef and, and your client says, we don't want any cilantro or onions in our food, and, and you make your food with that stuff because you think it's good, that's not a smart business move as your part as a chef. You're going to anger your clients. You're not going to get called back, and your reputation is going to go down the drain. You know, So if you see a taxi listing that requests a certain kind of music, and you think, I got something close or really cool, and you don't read the details and you send it in, it's not going to fit, and you're going to get returned, and you're going to get mad. Oh, Taxi stinks. My music's better. Well, that doesn't matter. The music for sync business is about you serving a customer's needs. If you can't deal with that, just stop. Stop the video. Stop thinking you're going to be a successful TV composer because that's not how the business works. You are serving a client. Sadly, these days, lots of folks have completely lost the idea of customer service and doing what clients need. It's not about your feelings. It's not about your art. If you want to respond to briefs, follow the instructions. Read the damn brief. That's what the big slogan is. Follow the instructions. And then if you're fortunate enough to make a relationship with a library, be sure you follow their instructions too. Don't be a little diva. It's not going to do you or anyone any good. Uh, so be, be number two, be sure to be able to accept constructive feedback. Number three, you're creating a product. These are songs. These are cues. They're not babies. They're not children. Don't consider feedback as an attack on your family, okay? These are songs and cues. Let go. You do not have Taylor Swift's next number one hit in your hands. Just No, you don't. Stop it. You don't. You're creating music, often very simple, banal music. But if you're doing it to get paid, you got to do what the client wants, not what you want, okay? Number four, figure out your best genre or two. And focus on listings around those genres. Taxi sends out hundreds of listings during the year. Okay, They come frequently. And you might not see your particular genre sometimes. And then, then you will. Right now, I've seen lots of um, emotional piano type listings. Which is up my alley. There's also a lot of rock listings. Um, there was a wave of jazz listings for a while. Um, the music is cyclical. and Different things are hot. It could be hip hop trap. <clears throat> trap. It could be lo-fi it could be something else dramedy um but figure out what your skills are your genres are and there's an old adage in the music industry you are what you listen to and that's very very true it's like you are what you eat you are what you listen to if you grew up listening to country music you're probably pretty fluent in that musical language um if you grew up listening to metal or, or rock mtv that those that time period you're probably good at that focus on listings on the things that you know now, if you choose to not do that and you say, I want to learn some new genres, that's totally cool. Because trust me, when I joined Taxi, I had no clue what dramedy was or, or, or hip hop or lo-fi and, and many other genres. I've been very successful in several of those genres now. I've learned them. How did I learn them? I immersed myself in those genres. And by that, I mean, okay, I'm going to pursue lo-fi for this library, for a client of mine or for a listing listening to nothing but lo-fi for a week 
on Spotify or Sirius XM, etc. Totally immersing yourself, listening to the music, the instrumentation, the pen, and the effects, the tempos, and, and just until you're sick of it, really. You want to, you got to digest that stuff and learn it. So you can do new genres, but you've got to truly dedicate yourself to the authenticity of that genre, okay? Otherwise, fall back on your strengths. My strengths, I grew up listening to classical and, and, and traditional jazz music and hip hop. Uh, soul, R&B, etc. And those are my strengths, and I still create music for that those genres today. Comes out very easily. So if you know, if you try to write what you know, it'll be much easier. You can work faster, and you get more product done. And as you're going to learn, it, quantity matters just as much as quality. Um, so number five, this is something I've heard from peers. From I've had the, the fortune and pleasure of working with some very famous, legendary musicians, and even the greats would say. Paul, there's always someone out there better than you. So understand that. You're not the best at what you do. There's tons of great folks out there. And music is a multifaceted thing. Writing music for TV is multifaceted. There's music, there's singing, there's lyrics, there's mixing. There's all sorts of stuff involved. And so there's always someone out there better than you. So put your ego aside and focus on creating the best product possible. As far as, uh, yeah, strive strive to get better. Don't strive to compete. You should only be competing with yourself to get better. Number six, get your equipment in order. Old synths, cheap sound libraries, bad recording quality, bad microphones. All that's going to do is inhibit you and frustrate you. And it's obvious to folks listening to music that you're using old stuff. So you've got to treat this seriously. If, again, if you're wanting to make money doing this, treat it like a business. Now, a little sidebar here. There's nothing wrong if all you want to do is get a song on TV and experience the rush, the joy, the thrill of hearing your music on TV. And you can say, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, kids, hey, friends, hey, boss. That's my song on this reality show or in this you know sports segment opening the Super Bowl or, or, or NBA, you know, whatever, golf tournaments, so hoppers. It's really, really cool to get your music and hear it on TV or in a movie. Um, and if that's what you want to do, a totally separate mindset. Write at your own pace and hope that eventually something like that happens. But if you're trying to generate revenue, you've got to do this regularly. Um, one thing I like, an analogy I like to use is writing music for TV, the sync business, uh, is like trying to start a winery or a farm. You've got to get the land, the tools needed to, to grow the grapes, and then you plant the grapes you grow the grapes, you harvest the grapes, you smush the grapes, you bottle the smushed grapes, you sit them in their bottles, they sit and they age, and, and eventually you got a product to sell. It's not a quick turnaround. And while your first year's harvest is, is, is sitting there aging uh, in the bottles, um, you got to plant the next year's round. And so otherwise, you did all that work and you stop and you got these bottles. Well, you sell that. Oh, I didn't plant another crop. I didn't keep feeding the machine. Now you got nothing. So music is the same way. Write the music, crank it out, submit it, move on and write some more music. Um, so yeah, make sure your equipment's good. Understand that it's going to take some time to do this stuff. Uh, number seven, important. Learn about mixing or find someone that can mix your music for you. You know, thanks to the amazing technical world we live in today, you've got great tools at your disposal, but it also means the bar is really high. And so you've got to be able to deliver a high quality product to your clients. And mixing is not as easy as you think. It requires good ears, some skills, good tools. So if you can't do it, partner with someone that can. Number eight, remember that every taxi listing and submittal and response are learning opportunities. You know, taxi's reputation as a business is on the line with every track that it forwards to its customers. They're not just not sending stuff to the clients when they like it. The whole reason people come to Taxi is Taxi saves them time. If I'm a music supervisor, I'm a music editor, and I need music for this show, if I have trusted resources I can go to to get quality music, I'm going to do that. It's going to save me time. Taxi's whole screening process says, hey, look, my value prop to you, Mr. Music Editor, is that I will find out what you want. You tell me what you need. I'll do the broadcast. My folks send my stuff by a certain deadline. We'll screen it all. We'll pre-screen it for you and send you just the stuff we think meets your needs. And that's a fantastic service. 
And so they're not going to just forward anything. And so Taxi wants you to succeed. Uh, and so the feedback they give you is based on them wanting you to succeed. Now, of course, they're humans. Screeners are not perfect. The screeners will make mistakes. I've been very frustrated with some returns. I've been frustrated when I've heard other folks' returns thinking, man, that didn't fit the listing. Or, man, that wasn't as good as my music. But uh, that gets me to point number eight, which means accept that the judging of music is subjective and you won't always agree with the feedback. So if you get to the point where you disagree uh, with the listing and you may have some merit or you hear someone else's forward at the forwards blog and think, man, that was not as good as mine. My dad always used to say, the world's not fair. Get over it, kid. So just move on. Don't let that angst or frustration you know, slow you down. They're not, they're not always going to get it right. Most often they do, but sometimes they don't. Hey, life's not fair. When life gives you lemons, add vodka and ice, a little bit of lemon, you know, you know you're good to go. Enjoy yourself. Move forward. Don't be bitter. Don't get frustrated. Hard at times, I understand, but but just move forward. Um, number uh, number 10. We're always number 10. Move my list here. I got a lot of notes here. Understand that when you submit to a listing at Taxi, it may take four to six weeks for them to get back to you as to whether it's a forward or return. You know, some listings get a lot more responses than others. You know, work, you know, finding folks to do this stuff and, and, and work schedules may make it difficult to, difficult to respond at times. Um, you just expect four to six weeks uh, to hear back. It usually it might be close to four weeks, um, but it takes time just to hear back. Now, one of the biggest questions taxi people, people you know, uh, uh, hear is, I got a forward. Awesome. A, congratulations. That means that your music is good enough. Uh, according to taxi screeners, meets their bar of excellence uh, to submit to clients. But it means, great, get back to work. Because, you know, you don't just sit there and, and pester, you know, call taxi and what happened? I've not heard back yet. Or when will I hear back from the library? You may never hear back from the library because your forward is one of many forwards. It's very possible that that library or that editor already found something for the job that they needed the music for. Um, or they may have found someone else's forward they like better than yours. So it may take days, weeks. I've heard stories from a lot of veterans. A couple of years later after a forward, they someone at a, at a library or an editor found a track. They're like, oh, this is, and, and I, had, I sent that in two years ago. Who cares? You just say, thanks. Yes, you may have it, and I can write you more. So uh, don't freak out checking your inbox and wondering what's going to happen next. Move on. The taxi mantra. Write, submit, forget, repeat. <clears throat> write your music, submit it, and get to your next project, and then do that over and over again, okay? Um, you just got to be patient. You got to work hard. When you plant a garden, do you go out every day and look to see if the vegetables are there yet? Probably not. You know it takes some time for those suckers to bloom. So just be patient. Write, submit, forget, repeat. Um, number 11. This Kind of a different thing. If you're doing instrumental cues, which are very, very popular, I focus largely on instrumentals. Probably 99% of my stuff is instrumentals. Uh, consider learning a new instrument. Consider learning guitar or bass or piano. Um, they will help you from a musical education perspective, but it also the ability to play live instruments in your tracks, as long as it's good enough, really makes a difference from the in-the-box stuff, although it's getting harder and harder these days because... Software libraries are just getting better and better. But try uh, learning a new instrument just to find different ways to create and to uh, find new compositional ideas. Um, number 12, get organized. Get a system, a book, a whiteboard. I've got a whiteboard uh, right here. Got a whiteboard of some of my stuff, you know, keeping track of my listings, my projects, my deadlines. The last thing you want to do with a taxi listing is listing is forget about it and then the day before try to crank out a project in a day and hope that it meets the needs when you rush you generally create a crappy product and, and then you're going to submit you're going to get returned you're going to use oh taxi stings i didn't get any forwards no you didn't plan properly it's not taxi's fault it's your poor organizational skills so get a calendar get a whiteboard keep track of stuff Pick a few listings, set your timelines, figure out how long it takes you to make this stuff. Keep track of that stuff. Stay organized. Again, treat this like a business. It's a hobby. That's that's if it's if you're treating it like a hobby, you're gonna get hobby results. 
And one of those results could be joy. There's nothing wrong with that. Music is the most wonderful thing in the world. It's math, history, science, art, all sorts of stuff that triggers all parts of your brains. And if you want to just do it for fun, fantastic. Taxi will give you lots of things to, to shoot for, some targets, some styles, some genres, and that's great. And, 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 and you can have fun with that and enjoy it. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm delivering content to try to help folks understand what they need to do to be successful at earning money in the industry. So just keep all that in mind. Um, number 13, read as much as you can and watch as much as you can on YouTube about recording and engineering and mixing. Um, it's mixing is, is an important thing. Don't take it for granted. Can you write music? That's great. Can you record it? That's cool too. Can you mix it so that it sounds worthy of listening to? We're talking about broadcast, broadcast, uh, a quality, uh, that's important. So you got to get good at that. There's courses online and if you can't do it, find a collaborator that will do it for you. You can do it on a per fee basis, work for hire. You can find, uh, engineers that will do it for a portion of the royalties. Hey, offer someone 25% or 50% to, Hey, I need help mixing. Will you do this for me for royalties? And some folks will do that. So consider that, but get, learn as much as you can about mixing, recording, and engineering. Okay. As far as some books go, um, Dean Crepain, I'll put links in the title because uh, Crepain is a very complex name. K-R-I-P-P-A-E-H-N-E, I think. He wrote a couple of great books. Uh, Demystifying the Q, Demystifying the Genre. Excellent books for beginners on how to figure out what these genres are, how to build cues. Uh, Steve Barden's got a fantastic book on writing music for TV. Uh, FET, F-E-T-T, -T, has a great book on engineering. Uh, a fantastic book to look at is the... Uh, uh, where the heck is it? The uh, Mixing Engineers Handbook. It's a wealth of knowledge, including a bunch of interviews of engineers on the things they do when they mix. So immerse yourself from an educational standpoint in the craft of composition and engineering. Um, number 14, gets back to equipment. Don't cripple yourself by working with old software. Get a dependable DAW, a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Um, GarageBand on the Mac comes with the Mac OS. It's free. And it's pretty dang good. And if you want to upgrade to Logic, one of the premier digital audio workstations in the market, it's only 200 bucks, which is mind-blowing, given the fact that this is an industry-leading application that does fantastic. Um, there's free DAWs out there. There's great DAWs for PC, for Mac. There's DAWs for Linux. Um, so get yourself a good DAW. If you don't know what a good DAW is, download free trials and try them out and figure out which interface makes the most sense for the way your brain works, the way your creative flow works. Uh, try their free trials and then and then invest in the one that makes the most sense for you. Don't be cheap. Again, treat it like a business. You're gonna have to buy a DAW. You're gonna have to buy some software libraries. Make yourself you got a good mic, etc. Um, and and uh, but but focus on having good tools to do your job. Don't let the, if you give a kid a bad clarinet, it's not gonna learn how to play clarinet. You give someone a broken chainsaw, they're probably gonna cut their arm off and not do a good job of cutting down trees. Okay, so the tools do matter. Um, number 15, this gets to your computer. A computer is your tool. Back up your data. Uh, you find a way to make sure you're doing backups. In the cloud, in, in the Mac world, you use Time Machine and dump your stuff to an external hard disk. Hard drives fail. This is my area of expertise during the daytime, I'm a computer guy. Hard drives fail. It's not a matter of if, but when. Protect your data. Make copies of your stuff. It's horrible to lose data. We've all done it. You know, losing, losing your... Uh, your projects for clients is bad enough, but losing family photos and audio and things like that is horrible. Just learn to back up your data properly. Um, getting back to recording, if you are a singer or are working with singers, uh, get a professional microphone. There's tons of reviews on YouTube of what mics to get. There's good USB mics. You can get decent quality for under a couple hundred bucks, or you can spend a couple hundred bucks or more and get a good microphone. You do not need to drop... 800 bucks for a thousand bucks or 5,000 bucks for a mic. That's just silly. You're not recording for CBS, you know, or Sony. You're recording you know, for TV. Um, and so there are plenty of great mics and good price points. YouTube can help you on, on that. But get a good microphone, get a pop screen so you're not, your plosives are not blowing up the microphones and ruining your recordings. Make sure you've got a decent room to record and sound treat your room. Most of the mixing problems in the taxi community are because their rooms are not properly treated. They don't have bass pads, uh, foam, things of that sort. You don't want a, a silence chamber, but you want to do what you can to mitigate bad frequencies to help your mixes sound good. Um, 
back to education, number 17. Think about subscribing to an online training service like MacProVideo.com or ADSR. Or if you don't have the money to do that, look around on YouTube for, for, for channels that offer fantastic you know, recording tips and mixing tips, etc. Immerse yourself not only in the genres of recording, but immerse yourself in education about the craft of recording. Um, number 18. As you learn new things in the taxi community, give back. Share with others. Mentor folks, because eventually you're not going to be new at this. Be sure you come back and help the new folks and help them learn from the mistakes that you made, like I'm helping folks learn from the mistakes that I made. Go back to the taxi forums, forums.taxi.com. Pay it forward. Uh, number 19, we're almost done. Find collaborators to work with. It's a fantastic way to learn. A great way to get better at someone, uh, to get better at something, is to work with someone better than you at that thing. I had a buddy who was a fantastic tennis player, and I used to play him, and he would just kill me. But my game got better. Get with folks that are better than you, and, and, and you will get better at your craft. And number 20, the last thing here, Taxi. The rally is so amazing. It's energizing. It's fun. It's educational. Um, to be with your peers, your mentors, do what you can for taxi members to get to the rally. It's usually the, the first week of November around November 6th or 8th or so, depends on the calendar. A three-day event, fantastic, at the Westin, near LAX. Uh, you don't ever need to leave the hotel unless you want to go out and get some food somewhere else, the fast food places. You are just surrounded by like-minded musical creatives, industry professionals, and the social hangar on the bar area is amazing, and a lot of relationships get made there. The networking, you meet librarians, you know, library owners, producers, developers, uh, music producers, music um, supervisors, things of that sort. It's just a fantastic thing. If you're not a taxi member, you can still attend the rally if you're a guest of a taxi member. But if you're joining taxi, <coughs> excuse me, that's probably the best benefit uh, besides the forums is just the rally getting energized. That being said, I wanted to share these top 20 things that I think will help you maximize your tax membership as a new member. Uh, feel free to ask me questions in the comments. Like usual, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe and follow me. Work the algorithm. I'm just a tiny little YouTube guy trying to help folks out. This keeps me off the streets when I'm not writing music. So hopefully this is useful. Drop those questions in the comments. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, until next time, good luck and good composing.